So it's episode three. Let's give you an update of where we're at. So, as you can see, we've got some more um, concrete block walls down this side. So when we finished off last time, we were digging out the foundations for this little bit. We've cast the foundations at this end up to this point so far. And you'll also note we've got some foundations down the bottom where you stand to steam up. So we'll talk about that area in a little bit. But if we follow this wall down, so we've got some of the blocks in. And what you'll see is this triangle area here. So to remind you of what we're looking at here, station, three tracks, and they're going to be coming round and all converging into two sets of points um, down here to all join up. Uh, three sets of points, sorry, three tracks. And so this wall is roughly where the back track will sort of touch onto. The other brick wall that's coming round here to form the area where you stand to steam up. This will all be full of rubble, so all the three trucks will then combine into this area here. So this gets a little bit complicated because we're going to have brick wall this side for the path, brick wall this side for the area to steam up, and then your concrete wall in the middle, which is where your track sits on. The other part of the triangle, around this way, is so that you can just run around this loop. So again, this and it's a tighter radius as this one, so it's not going to be a four foot. Um, it's 38 inch radius at each end with a, a straight bit in, in the middle to get the angles right to get back round again. But that comes round and goes onto this end. And you're probably wondering how are we going to just just how basically? Well. <laughs> This is a little bit of a jog in the wall because this is where the quarry is going. So rather than have the wall, the concrete wall following the track at this point, and then another concrete wall following the track for the quarry, we've done it the concrete wall for the quarry track, which comes in, and this is the quarry base, which is what all this is its infills in for. And the brick wall comes around the outside, and again this will be full of rubble, and we'll try and form a little bit of a, a soil area in the middle so we can put some planting in, but we'll see how that goes. Um, but the, the outside track here will be on brick wall and infill, so it's still not going to go anywhere. And by the time it gets around here to the point, it's back on the concrete wall. And obviously it's sat on the concrete wall here. So down this side, you can really start to see how this construction's working. So brick wall, the face you see, concrete wall that the track sits on, and this is where we're hoping now, because of the way we've designed it, to have two tracks down this side, so we're going to have one on the far inside here, one around sort of that mark I would say, enough that you're not going to catch it when you're walking past, so it's going to be in a little bit so you don't catch any trains because this is going to be the running line. This one's going to be a sort of, um, not quite a siding because it, we were hoping to get it joined back up there, but it will come through the quarry area. So it'll just be an area, probably not for steaming up, although you could do, but you could park up here or a battery logo on or something like that. Just an extra little bit. And you'll see we are infilling all the time the cavities that we're creating. So again, when your track is sat on here, this side of the track is sat on rubble. It's not sat on thin air underneath. Obviously, when we get up to this level, we'll cast um, or fill in the cavity with a little bit of concrete so it's, it's all one uh, and then ballasting everything you'll never see it but it just means this section here can't ever drop into that that air gap it's uh, it's sat on something strengthens it all up and we have a lot of brake work down so we're almost now up to the track level at this point so remember two tracks combining here hopefully so this is all single round here and we've given it 
uh, more width so your track will be further to the inside here than it will be down the straight because obviously you've got overhangs when locos are going round and we don't want um, somebody walking past to catch the loco running round. So that will come round here, get to the straight section that so we've got in the wall and this is where your points then, so two points here to make the three tracks unlike three points there to make three tracks because obviously it's got one carrying on this will fan out into the station area so more infill in the wall once we've built this up we'll keep bringing the infill up and then we'll cast the concrete top on this and then in this area you'll see foundations are in and we're going to form a round, rounded end for this end and this area here we're going to uh, be creating something a bit special which we'll cover a little bit later on but the foundations are in for that and then you'll see down that end of the garden we're starting to dig to prep the foundations as we head this way but as it's raining, it has just started we're going to stop giving this update and go find some shelter. So yeah, that's where we're at. See you later. So as you can see, we've more foundation in. So we've done this section here. We've stopped here because we've run out of sand and gravel. So we need to get some more of that done. But that gives you an idea of how we do it. You see we've got the pegs in. These are our height markers. So they're set in the height of our foundation and you cast your foundation and tamp it down using these to get the right level. And then we know this point here for this set height that we've done down this section, it is two blocks and one brick. And the blocks divide by three into bricks. So the outside uh, brick face, which is this one, uh, comes up to the right amount and this one with the brick and two blocks will come up to the right amount for the track level. Now this face here will actually be slightly higher because we're going to carry on the, the, uh, this mound up um, to give you some sort of backdrop for the, for the uh, passing loop here but that's basically it. So we've dug this one down, obviously we've run out of stuff. And you can also see that we've marked all the way along as to where our brick walls go in. So this gives us a nice gap to the house and to the garage down this end for the brick wall. And we've also got this uh, bridge block wall curving round, which will be the track bed for this bit. So as I mentioned before, this section here has got the track on its joint wall. When we get down this section here, the brick wall leaves it, the breeze block one follows the tracks, um, which means you can have scenery, um, planting and things behind the, the line on the bank going further up so that when you view it from this side, it's on the hillside, which is the whole aim of it all. And you'll see we've started to put some of the soil back around these outsides just so we didn't have to cart it too far. Um, but obviously we're gonna need more to bank it up. A little bit more fill to do but we're almost there now we've got some some of the bags have smaller stuff in so they'll go on top um, but we're just waiting on some larger pieces to go in the bottom that are on their way and then we'll fill it up complete the walls round and start putting some soil back on it there's a plan brickwork wise we're still going there obviously it takes a bit longer to the bricks especially on the corners because we're having to half all the bricks to make a nice radius around the corner and unfortunately we've got more radiuses to do because we've got another one there to do we've got this even tighter one round here and then even when we got into this section here we've got another two here although shorter ones however once we get these sections get to these longer sections they should go up a lot quicker because they're not um we're not down as far so we don't have to put as many courses on and they're straight so we'll we'll get through them a lot quicker but it is going to be higher but it is going to be higher it is going to be higher but not that much we're only probably going to be 
Yeah, we're not that much. Two bricks or something like that. We're not going to go up a massive amount of this back here because you've, you've only got between here and here to actually bank your material up. So yeah. Um, so yeah, you don't want to put too much stuff on there. It might even be one brick. We'll see with the uh, one brick with the uh, this L-shaped capping stuff, so that the soil sits on top of the wall. It's probably what it's going to be. I don't think we'll get to two. And uh, and yeah, and then I have had a thought that when we come to wall this wall, what I might do is leave a breeze block out somewhere here. Um, is what I'm thinking, just away from the point. Um, and away from that point, in between the two. Um, but I'll, I'll see. The idea would be, if I leave, leave a breeze block out, I can actually uh, wall some smaller bricks or half bricks or something in between, make a little divot in the track bed, and then you can just have a little um, bridge or support across it, as if it's like a culvert or something running down. Um, whereas if we wall them all up perfectly to the track, I have to then chisel it out to put that in. So if we think about it now, we can just leave a little divot there and then we can create something, just a little scenic item, especially close to this, this dam, because you would have a little stream or something running down the hillside towards the dam. So that would work out quite well. So yeah, that's it for this coronation weekend, as it's been. Very hot coronation weekend. Yeah. Well, no, we have got the bank holiday oh. Monday, tomorrow. That's going to be wet. But it's quite wet tomorrow. <laughs> So this is probably it, progress wise, other than a little bit of fill possibly, in between the showers. Morning! So, where are we up to? Well, as you can see, we've filled the loop. All of it's now at the level we wanted it at, and we've put our um, black weed suppression stuff in, which isn't actually to suppress weeds, um, because we'll probably have those anyway. Um, now this is to make sure that any soil we put on top isn't just going to all disappear through and also it might just retain a little bit of water in the top so it's not all going to dry out too quick by just all filtering down into the rubble and sitting underneath in a pool. So that's the idea is to effectively create a top layer that we can actually grow stuff in. The only one that's a bit different, uh, well we've got a bit different in this corner because this bit's going to come up further yet so we haven't filled this corner because we haven't put any soil too close to it. But this is the quarry bit, so this is obviously going to be more solid up to this level. We've just got to put a bit more fill in. This section here is a bit different. This one we're going to keep it deep um, and then we can have some uh, a bigger tree or something in this corner is what we're thinking. And um, it's just a bit of an experiment to see what the difference is between them. But this is only going to come up to this height anyway. so it's it's only one block different to that, uh, so not a huge amount in, in practice. Um, so yeah, so the next thing is to take that big mound and put it in that layer loop. Well, certainly not all of it. Um, what we'll probably do is just bring it up to the block level. I don't want to pile it up too much because it's going to I have to compact down anyway, so I'll let it do it naturally. And I don't want to push the top blocks off um, until we've got the bricks all the way around and it's more secure. But uh, we should be able to get some of it into here and reduce that pile at our end. So that's the plan for the next few hours. And then we're hopefully then going to do a bit more brick walling round to bring the level up. Rob has disappeared for the minute, so I'll give you a bit of an update. But he's, he's been a busy boy today, and uh, there's a lot of soil now. In fact, it's filling up quite nicely. But there's also some more bricks, and he's been leaving little deposits of track around. Let's see if we can find him, shall we? I'm going to presume he's here somewhere. Found him. Damn it. Come and explain what you've been doing, particularly with track. Particularly with track? Because I've found track. Well, I'm just confirming that we have actually built it correctly. 
Oh, that's a fair one. And it appears we have. That's good. So, yeah, basically, our plan worked. So, uh, yeah, well, basically, we're just. To be fair, this wasn't in the plan. So, actually, we built it incorrectly, but it works. This is the uh, main line on the outside, and we talked about the uh, little siding we have in there. And I'm just seeing whether two short radius points here away here, will uh, fit in there, which they will. And it doesn't matter that they're not a four foot radius because if you can't get through those, um, which to be fair, I think most things can anyway, uh, you can come straight down the outside and you just don't use, don't use that siding. And we've got a little bit of a, an on run there we can put in uh, as well, just for cooling down of your loco. But then radius will run round and we've got to the first point for the station. So there'll be another one basically there as well which will then lead us into our our station these are the tricky ones because we've obviously got a radius coming into it and a radius going out of them and these are straight and not the same radius and it's a little bit tricky this I wasn't quite sure how these would fit um, but we'll it's looking like it will we've, we try to allow ourselves enough room to, uh, to fiddle them out a little bit with angles but I think we'll get them in. This is exciting. We are up to the level. This is the level. This is exciting. That it will be at. For this section anyway, we've obviously got more to do. Oh yeah, but this this is just... Yeah. This is a milestone. And of course the other thing I've done today, <laughs> which seems to have been a hell of a job, and hasn't actually filled it that much for how much I've yeah, shifted from the other end. I can see it. I can... Uh... The mound has the reduced mound. quite considerably. It really has. Uh, but, uh, but it still but yeah, hasn't filled this. We obviously <laughs> haven't put a huge amount in because we want to keep, uh, well mainly around that end, we want to get the walls further up so we have that cavity, fill it up, give ourselves that bit more strength. Um, but also I want to just let it all settle down on its own. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And. Uh, and um, we might need to put a little bit of fill in at the back as well, especially down the bits where we're putting the siding in. We're going to need something there to uh, just to give us that little bit more distance here. Probably a bit of a wall, especially when you get down to here, because you've got to imagine this is where the quarry's going. And that gives you an idea that if the quarry's up here somewhere, with the wall round, this has to be filled in. So we're going to need a lot of soil, which is what we've realised. Yes. Gonna need a lot of soil. We did think we had enough to start with. We don't. It's very hard to gauge. But uh, but yeah, so we just need to carry on filling in that section over there with the wall. And then we can head off down this back. And there you go. Nice lovely walls. Yep. I haven't even gone. seen this bit round here. Didn't realise there was more walls around here. Oh yeah. Good morning. So, let's uh, have a look at where we've got to, because we are making our way that way. We've got wall, brick wall now in down here, and the job to do today is hopefully to wall up to the uh, track level along here. We've got infill in. Uh, or certainly quite a bit of it. We've still got more to add, but we don't want to put too much in until we've completed the station area. But all the sections in. We're full height on the quarry, and we have all the infill now in place. So we're leaving a good few inches down of infill, and then this will all be concreted in, so that when we come to fix the track on, we are just, uh, we, when we drill down into it, it's not going to split apart, we're not going to break the top surface off. There's plenty of depth there for the plug to go into and screw down to. Because we are screwing the track down. So same along here. Just infill in, ready for concreting. All the way round. Mind the duck. Round to here. 
This bit we've just put a little bit of cement in because it was only a narrow gap and we had some left over. So this bit's sort of filled for now. Ready for track going on. And then if we come down to the steel up area, which gives you a really good idea now of height that you're going to be working at um, on this section. Infill, we've got about right at this end. Obviously we need to complete the wall at that end, but it's slowly working its way up and again few inches down it might even go a bit thicker here because of the thickness of the uh, uh, or the, the width of it will go a bit thicker so it can't break apart and cast this in and then down in here we now have in place the lovely arch or curve round this corner so uh, that's coming up and then we get to this area, which anybody paying attention uh, will notice it wasn't on the plan. So yeah, this is an extension already, but we wanted to put this in because we realised that this is such a nice height to steam up at, but we've only got two steam up tracks here, plus the running line. So you've only actually got two places, so we've done all this work and you've only got two areas to steam up in. So why not have another one, this side, to steam up in, because it was the same height. So that was the idea, but it was how to connect it in. So that was the first challenge. Because coming off round here would have been too tight, uh, because of all the points combining from this corner. So we're actually going to come from that direction, reuse that existing bridge, come off the line, it will be a tighter radius and come onto it here and have two tracks for steaming up. But then, how does this fit in with the look of the line? So, if I show that image, the idea is for it to be a dam wall that's kind of half built, two thirds built up to this point, so the other side of the valley would be there. So if you come round to this side of it, follow me this way camera. This will be the dam wall, arches on top, and you've got to then think, this will all be banking hillside here for the line. So this is sort of your valley that will come round this corner into the dam so it makes sense that they're then damming this little bit here. So obviously there'll be brick behind it when you look through the arches and things like that but that's a concession we just thought it was a little cool feature to have to do that. So the plan is to wall this up and then uh, cast some arches probably at a later date on top of it. But So we're only going to come up uh, one block down on this section. This one here will be full height and we're not quite sure what we're going to do with this bridge yet, so we're just going to leave this, but there is a foundation sat down here. Um, if we are going to wall it up, we'll just decide what we're going to do with that bit. Because uh, it depends how it links in with all the bridge. But the other advantage we can use with this section is we're actually going to put an alcove in. So if we look back at this plan again, this area here, we're going to form an alcove. And this will mean that when you're steaming up, you can put your, your box tucked away in that side uh, or water bottle or something like that. Now this plan we've got it in two sections but we've actually managed to source long enough concrete lintels to do it in one span. Um, we're, we're, well to be fair they were available it was just what price we were willing to pay for them and actually we've managed to secure these cheaper than four of the smaller ones which we've done quite well at. So they'll go on top and that'll mean you can tuck your boxes and things out of the way and you're not going to jump up over them. So they'll be coming in a little bit, like when we'll get to that stage we'll see. Um, but we're getting there. So, as we're working our way down to this end of the garden, I thought it was probably about time we made sure that we'd actually got this plan correct. So as you can see, we've set it out like we did at the other end, we've put in the uh, marking lines on, on the ground. 
yellow being the track, white being sort of foundation sort of area, or at least where we're going to dig out. Um, and yes, the plan will work. We are a little bit tight on the points at the back, but we've done some checks, calculations, all sorts, and it says it will work. So, it will work, I'm sure. False shattering anything, I don't know. But anyway, it says it will. So, the idea with this end, this end's going to be the stone end, um, or at least down that side. This bit here is going to be more banking. But we referenced in an earlier clip that we were going to put an opening in here. And this has caused us problems because we said we were going to use, reuse this bridge, which we could do. The only problem is we're between two points. We're between the point here that's splitting it for the loop and a point here that's splitting it from the track down there and the track to the um, bricked up tunnel wound that we're going to have as a feature. And that distance probably does fit it, you know, this bridge in. But the point of having this bridge in was so we can bring a wheelbarrow in. And we haven't got much gap between here and here, which means you can't swing the wheelbarrow in. So we kept moving it around, moving it that way, this way, and we just couldn't get the geometry correct. So we've compromised a little bit. We're not going to reuse this bridge, but we are going to put a bridge in. And what you'll actually see is we've dug out to here previously, and we've actually filled a section in because when we actually went back and looked at the plan, we'd come a bit too far. So it's a good job we didn't bring the foundation that far, and you could say we thought about that, but that, in truth, we just ran out of sand and gravel. So we got lucky a little bit there that we weren't breaking this bit out for the night. <laughs> just shows you've got to check your plans. <laughs> But, uh, but anyway, we've shifted it back that way. There will be a bridge, just like this one, in this place, on this radius, this is four foot. But where this stone is, is actually going to be the point, and it's going to be on the bridge, which is a bit odd, but it's a compromise. Because what it means is we've widened this gap, shifted it round that way a little bit, which means you can get the wheelbarrow in a lot easier. Um, you're not going to risk hitting the walls on either side with it. So that's what the hit that's in here for. The stick is just in as an easier visual as to where the track level is. So track level top of this green line, that lower green tape line, and where this stone sort of sat is going to be the height because we're raising this path ever so slightly. And when you level that path across to here, that's going to be the height of it. So We've done this as a visual because then we're just going to ramp this area down this side. But it's mainly because these stones represent some steps that we're going to build in here. Because the bridge, although eventually it might be lift up and things, we're wanting a way of getting over the track without having to take the bridge out of use. So there's going to be steps there to do that. And we're a bit concerned about how far you have to come up to this level. But actually, if we're coming from this point at this side, which is our a smaller side, we can't get as many steps in, it's a lot easier because we're already affected one step up. So you better step up over there and come down here. This side also serves a dual purpose in that this sort of steps here will be a, a sort of end wall for that bit of banking because obviously we don't want it all spilling out into our um, opening here. Same at this side, we're going to put another stone wall here which will be the end of this bank this stone wall will come along here and the brick wall that's coming down this side will put up to it to there. So that will be the join. We did say about breaking it here and so we probably could have put a brick wall down this side but I didn't like the two brick wall one side stone wall. Looking from that end I thought it, it would suit the stone wall and it would match in better with the bank here. It will blend in a lot better. So we'll do the joint in that corner. So that's that bit done. We've marked out here quite where we're going to put this bridge section in here, we're not 100% sure about yet because we need to think about what we're doing with the pond um, which is what we're working on now but the main purpose of doing all this was just to confirm where we're going to stop at, on that end where we put the foundation now because that now we've got some sand and gravel we can actually cast up to this point and we know we're correct 
when we come to do this end loop. So, uh, so yeah, so that can be another job we can get on with today if we have time to get that foundation in and then do some walling and we're continuing down this end of the garden. Let's get to it. Good morning and uh, and welcome to our sort of Victorian well side. Does look a little bit like that. Does look a little bit like that. Yeah. Yeah, slightly uh, industrial revolution kind of vibe going on in this corner. But as you can see, we are at the track height all the way around now, um, or at least all the way up to here for this end of the loop. So, um, so in theory, we're done on walling here. We've got this section still to do, um, which is our uh, alcove lintel special piece here, um, which is probably going to get done today. But you can see already, we've got the base of it in. Um, so this is where your water bottle, loco box and things can be sat on here. And then up at uh, the Two bricks down. Because it's now changed from what Yes, it's slightly we've changed. Said. We've changed the design slightly. Got, um, we may have made a little bit of a mistake in the height or my calculations. But it's fine because we then checked all our numbers again and realised we can actually make the top of it higher. So it's almost easier because it's actually higher up off the ground. Then. Um, but anyway, that's these are just one of those things that you uh, come across when you're doing this sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, basically the lintel is going to go on at this height and then we'll cast this special arches dam sort of look on top. Um, but that will all come in time. Um, but you get the idea that this is the alcove. We've got... I could come around there and show it You better, can, yeah. So. The We've got this little return here just to hold that bit of garden back. Quite what the ground level will be doing here, I'm not 100% sure mm -hmm. yet, we might bring it up further, but that's where we've stopped for now. And uh, and yeah, so that's going to have a bit more work done today. We're now just filling in, we've got a uh, bit more work to do down in this corner, because although the track is coming off where that bridge is sat currently, we're going to put this block in here because we've put the foundation in. This will come up and it will mean that you can actually have a bit of a straight on here. You can park a loco or something in this corner is what we were thinking. Um, so that would come off at a point there. Um, so that's why we're going to wall that. So we've just got to wall that up a little bit there. So that's got that base. And then the other main thing we're trying to do now is infill. So this is sort of a, an end wall that I've built with the infill. Um, because from this point on here it's all going to be soil um, or a bit of rubbly stuff at the bottom and soil we'll, we'll see, we, don't, we have to think a little bit about drainage um, but the concrete side that will come all around the station here will get to here basically and, and stop um, in fact it will probably just go off somewhere there um, I need to just check this, I might move this wall slightly, we'll, we'll see but basically that's where you Tracks coming around going into the point. So that's that. More soils in this end. Um, we've still got to do the quarry face, but we have some stone that we might be able to use for that. Again, I just need some infill. It's amazing how much infill we need. We've, we have built a bit of a monster and it's just consuming all the rubble that we can get all of. But anyway, that's that. Um, but yeah, that's basically it for this end of the garden. But uh, What's been going on down that end? Hot to anyone? <laughs> and no, this is not a hot tub. Uh, this is the pond. Um, things look a little bit smaller when you. Uh, see them online and then when they uh, they turn up they're, they're a bit bigger than you think actually no it no is quite I have monster. seen this <laughs> it is quite a monster we did go and look at it to make sure that it wasn't too big it is an absolute monster and uh, yeah it's probably far bigger than what we were going for but we got a deal 
and oh, that's what matters. Um, so it will work. It will actually fit. Uh, quite what position? We're thinking this position as it is now, but obviously lower. Um, but we've still a little bit of work to do on this. But the opportunity came to get this, um, and that's what we did. So we've actually managed to get this. There's pump and filter and things and pieces, and a really nice. Oh yeah. Waterfall section to go on it. So we've sort of set it up here so we can take some measurements and things so we know where we have to position it for that. Um, but I don't know how well it comes off, comes across on camera, but this, because it's sort of weathered in, because it's a, a uh, one that's been fit and used, it's really nice. So we just need to be careful when we fit it to try and weather it in a little bit so it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't stand out as being old mm. next to all the other bits we have new. And not break it. And not break it. Because it is concrete. It's cast concrete. It is cast concrete. I'm not quite how on earth they yeah, managed to get I this detail, know. I don't know, but it's lovely. So the problem with this, however, is you've got this distance, this height, and it wouldn't make sense to have this higher than the track. So the track is coming round find a set of screws down there around here somewhere. I think it is. So we don't really want the water coming out higher than it because where would the water have come from? We obviously don't want the water coming out down this edge because this is a hillside heading off that way so where's it coming from again? It's got to sort of look semi-realistic. So we want to try and keep it down that fence line so that it's coming beyond where you can see. Um, <laughs> but it wants to be below the track so that it's actually coming out underneath the track. So, if we go back to this, the theory is we want the track to be coming across the back here somewhere and the water coming out underneath. It may have to be down in a slight cutting, but as long as the water that's appearing out of the pump outlet here, at this sort of level, is below the track line, I think it'll look correct. Um, I don't think it matters if this part of it is slightly higher, as long as where the water's coming from. If coming to this track, there's obviously a bit of depth and things like that, but we're not, we don't have to be perfectly accurate. Because the more we go higher with the track here and lower this, the more that little big beast has to be dug into the ground. Yeah, it's already got to be dug in quite a long way. That's the track height. Yes. <laughs> Add your waterfall on, it's down here. That has to go a long way in the ground. And uh, that's a lot of digging. Now we do need more soil, because we need more soil down here. Um, but we, we don't really digging up the lo local sewer lines or mains cabling or appearing in Australia. So we don't want to go too deep. No. But anyway, that's for another day. We're just computing that in our heads. Today, walling, probably concreting. Yeah, we, we now, need to get this foundation done. We have now restocked, so we can concrete this. So they work our way there. Some infill, possibly some concreting on that loop at the track level, and then we can put some, um, or get onto track lane. We're not going to put track down just yet, because we have a technique. We're going to show you as to how we did it at Southgate, and we're going to repeat it here as to how to get a nice, smooth, flat track bed and it's something that I've seen nobody else do probably because it's a bit odd but it did work so I want to demonstrate it so that will be coming up but uh, yeah that's that's it for now I'm gonna to get to work yep make the most of the sunshine yeah what the hell am I doing okay it is getting on for nearly five o'clock but it's still hot and uh We've kind of got up to the point of the alcove where the lintels would go. So we're just trying to let that set a bit before we can put the uh, lintels on top. And uh, Rob's just uh, clearing out the debris. But it is definitely getting there. Ooh, wind. That, that wind is quite nice, to be fair, because it's hot. Yeah. Hello. Foundation as well. 
Oh, we've done the foundation as well. That is a good point. Let's go and look over here. And that we have laid all the way all of this foundation. No, I'm pointing at the wrong one. This one. All down here. So that's a pretty major stepping stone. Yeah, need to mark it. Because really. uh, it needs. Yeah. Well, need we haven't quite decided marks. how no, we're going to wall this bit. This bit. Just mark it that Where there's two tracks, a bit undecided. No it's got a bit of a mark on it. I did, I did yeah, mark yeah. this so end. That end I'll have looking at it, and it might not be quite in line. We're a bit sharper an angle there, yeah. So we'll, we'll just put you but, thing and do it again. But yeah, we're just letting this set a little bit so we can put the lintels on and use up the last bit of bit of cement. Morning. Morning. So, pretty special day today because we are. Well, casting the station. Yeah. Which is quite exciting. We've got high enough up, we've got enough infill in, that we're, uh, we're confident enough to fill the station, which is going to take. Oh, quite a few of these. A lot of mixes. Yeah. A lot of mixes. So, uh, yeah, let's. Get mixing. Let's get mixing and get pouring. <laughs> So the uh, concrete is all cast, uh, it, it is actually after lunch now, it's been setting for a couple of hours and uh, Rob's just marking out roughly where the tracks are going to go. Yep. Um, this is all important for actually laying it, we'll, we'll show you how we get it all level. Yes, because the uh, tracks are not going to sit on this. No. Well, we've cast this pretty flat, we're going to uh, do a little bit of a technique that we'll show you to get it even better, hopefully. But that's for next episode. Uh, for now it's just marking it out. But we have a bit of challenge for you. Is how many how many mixes do you think this took to pour all of the station there all the way that. around let us know in the comments youtube facebook wherever you want as long as we see it yep and uh, and yeah and whoever's first on the right number we'll get in touch and we'll we'll send you something out yeah something appropriate well uh We'll let Rob finish doing this. Yeah. Next job, 
is going to be laying the lintels on the alcove minus the couple of bricks that are stacked there at the minute so this is all now set enough for the lintels to go on here so yeah that's next that's this afternoon's job see how that goes Come on now, arm. <laughs> you ready? Come on. Apparently, oh, a lot of that came out. <laughs> <laughs> that went badly. You go badly, we cut that. <laughs> <laughs> 